Hey everybody, welcome to the Crypto Coffee Update. I'm your host, Paul, and this is a segment where we talk about all kinds of stuff happening in crypto from conferences to events and perhaps our largest segment, the news, which we're going to start out with here momentarily. But first, join me now for what we like to call our simultaneous sip, where we just sip some coffee, tea, or water if you feel, together for a moment of peace and quiet to start the day right. Nice and relaxing. All right, like I said, let's go ahead and roll into the news of the day. How would you like to have 111,000 Bitcoin? Well, one wallet does, and it's become active after four years of not moving anything at all. This has some users worried, however, it isn't all it's cracked up to be and doesn't seem like there's too much to worry about, at least from my opinion. Let's explore. The wallet specifically has 111,114 Bitcoin, or about $800 million. Back when it was first created, that was only $73 million, and there's all kinds of speculation. Some people think it's Satoshi, others say it's Mt. Gox, some think it's a Silk Road wallet, or others just say it's an anonymous whale investor. Whoever may own this wallet, they only moved about $110 million worth of Bitcoin to various exchanges, so it very well may be someone just cashing out some of their initial investment, or perhaps Mt. Gox themselves going to settle with the individuals from the Mt. Gox trading debacle. Whatever the case may be, this does call into questions a very interesting metric. There's been studies speculating that about 4 million bitcoins are lost forever, and this makes one wonder, how exactly would you qualify that metric considering private keys give you access to the wallet? Do you count Satoshi Nakamoto's wallet as lost forever? After all, he's a smart dude, he could very well have those private keys kind of hanging around in the back of his head, but only time will tell there. One thing's for certain, Bitcoin Gold, a recent Bitcoin fork, is being delisted from Bitrex as they decline to repay stolen coins from the Bitcoin Gold chain. Let's go ahead and explore what's happening with this Bitcoin fork. Originally, Bitrex said that Bitcoin Gold should usurp the cost of 12,372,000 Bitcoin Gold as a result of a double spend attack that was made on the Bitcoin Gold chain shortly after the platform's launch. This ended up costing Bitrex about 388,000 Bitcoin gold, or about $18 million at the time, and after paying for a bit of the loss themselves, they asked Bitcoin gold to shore up an initial 12,000 before lowering the amount to only 6,000 Bitcoin gold. Now, Bitcoin gold says that they're a nonprofit organization and that a lot of the funds for their nonprofit are time locked in contracts, so they're not able to get those funds and repay Bitrex for their loss, and for that reason, they can't reach an amicable solution. You can see a quote from Bitcoin Gold, we feel it's clear we took every reasonable step to try and ensure Bitrex's safety against this threat. All our exchange partners can rest assured we'll continue to work with them to assist them wherever possible and that we will continue to work towards improvements which will increase the safety in the crypto space. This calls into question to what extent work needs to be done on these Bitcoin forks by these developers before they're ready for prime time. And what responsibility these exchanges have before listing these respective Bitcoin forks and opening up their customers to some potential uh, unsavory results such as 51% attacks. Speaking of the exchange of crypto and successful businesses like Bitrex, Brisbane is becoming the new crypto capital of Australia and the author speculates that they could become the world's top crypto destination. This is because a company, Travel by Bit, has received two rounds of funding from the state government and in turn has revolutionized Brisbane into a very crypto friendly area. According to Gizmodo, the company wants to enable travelers to pay for all of their amenities in their travels with cryptocurrency when visiting Queensland. In fact, the town already has some businesses that are accepting crypto, the airport became the first airport in the world to accept crypto, and Queensland's Minister of Innovation and Tourism, Kate Jones, views cryptocurrency as a vital cog that is set to drive more tourists to Queensland. So it seems Queensland has all the pieces of the puzzle necessary for a government-supported cryptocurrency revolution. In fact, to quote, that's why we've invested to help them, travel by bit, scale up their operation and ultimately create more jobs in Queensland. So is this an example of government intervention done right in the economy? Let me know what you think of the new crypto city of Queensland down below in the comments. Other nations are taking a more heavy-handed approach. You may recall back in April when the Indian High Court handed down an order to cease all crypto-related activity in the country, including the exchange of crypto. Well, now Indian regulation officials are taking what's called study tours to check out how their neighbors are handling this crypto revolution.
From the article, the SEBI, an Indian regulatory authority, has stated that several of these tours have already concluded to countries such as Japan, the UK, and Switzerland. The document explains these trips were in order to engage with the international regulators and gain a deeper understanding of the systems and mechanics, assumingly checking out their more technologically savvy neighbors to see how developed nations are handling uh, this new medium of exchange. As said back in April, the AML and FATF framework, which essentially is in place to stop money laundering worldwide, used this as a predication for cracking down on crypto hard. Now only time will tell if this will result in more amicable regulation coming out of the subcontinent. However, given that this is a marketplace and that there is high demand in other parts of the world, hopefully they'll be able to get this issue squared away sooner rather than later. After all, it seems crypto really is the future. Considering many individuals denominate their crypto in US dollars, euros, or other respective fiat currencies, if inflation continues unabated, that may not be the case indefinitely. Especially considering Bitcoin, despite its decline, has outperformed three national currencies from emerging markets. You can see from the article, it's a big chunk, but I highlighted the important part. Pension Partners carried out a year-to-date analysis for 2018, and even though Bitcoin has dipped 46.7%, Excluding Bitcoin's significant percentage gains through 2017, the Venezuelan Bolivar, Sudanese Pound, and Argentine Peso have fallen 99.99, 61.61, and 50.5% respectively. Even though these are financially impoverished nations due to the hyperinflation that's plagued emerging markets, this is something that seems to be resonating upward as economies attempt to smooth out and control forces that are largely out of their hands. After all, what is a central bank but a group of individuals who claim omniscience so far as to believe that they can control the very medium of exchange on which the human economy and society itself is predicated? It's little wonder why these systems have begun to bottom out as they have every other time in the past, starting with Ming flying money back in the 1300s. All fiat currency eventually returns to its true intrinsic value, zero, and digital money with a provably fungible supply is a huge improvement for humanity at large. It removes the ability for the psychopathic psychophants to hijack the levers of control in society and result in currency devaluing by, as can be seen, almost 100%. This is a real impact in real countries all around the world, and frankly, crypto is the force that has the greatest potential to abate this human suffering. Here's a chart that demonstrates the findings from pension partners. You can see Quantum is the crypto that has retraced the most at 91%. However, that's still less than the Venezuelan Bolivar and a bit more than the Sudanese pound. Will these charts begin to have similar figures in the future? Will they completely reverse relative to one another, showing inverse correlation? Let me know what you think below in the comments. For now, that's all we have for the news. Let's go ahead and get into the happenings in the crypto space for September 5th, Wednesday. We have a conference called Decentralized Berlin happening where else but Berlin, Germany. The Disrupt SF 2018 conference is kicking off, sponsored by TechCrunch in San Francisco. Bitrex will be launching a USD market for both Cardano and Zcash, tickers ADA and ZEC, respectively. Basic Attention Tokens having their AMA, and NEO is having a meetup in Malaysia. For September 6th, Thursday, there is Blockchain Conf happening in Atlanta. That's all we have for September 6th and for this Crypto Coffee update. There's a lot more happening below in the description. Just check the B list. It's just far too many projects to talk about with respect to time. After all, I try not to play favorites, try to maintain objectivity, but I mostly want to focus on the news, the happenings, and keep you all up to date. So what do you think? Did I do a good job? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this content, feel free to drop us a like on Viewly. Doesn't cost you a thing, and it gives us a nice boon. Much preferable to YouTube. With that said, thank you so much for watching. Your support really does mean a lot. I read every comment and every message that we get. But for now, my name is Paul, signing off. Thanks again. We are Cryptide, and remember, the tide is rising, but not for the valuation of fiat currency worldwide.